it's September 29th 2019 and this is episode 6 of Plane Savers Down Under. Today we're at the Royal Australian Air Force Museum at Point Cook, the oldest operating military airfield in the world. And this is the headquarters building for the museum. The RAAF Museum Squadron Crest is a C-130 Hercules, I think it's a H model, I just can't see the registration number. Someone said a baby's face only a mother would love. The DHC-4 Caribou, again, and then as you see up on the tail, 45 years of service to the nation. I'll just give you a brief look at the entrance to the museum. There's a montage of some of the aircraft. We're now in the training hangar. Our first aircraft we see here is a Tiger Moth. And then there is the CT4 air trainer. Over the back there is the Morris Farman Shorthorn. And as we move around, there are the Mackie, the Windjeel, Vampire, and way over the back, the 504, the Avro 504. So these have not long been phased out from basic training. They were a very successful trainer. There again is a Link Trainer, Tiger Moth, there's the Mackie Trainer, this is the Morris Farm and Shorthorn. Then we end, we have another Telstar's Vampire, the Windjeel, and the Avro 504K. Not only was this a major player in the RAAF or in the early days, it was the first aircraft, an Avro 504K, that started Qantas off in the Queensland outback. Here is a fully restored World War II veteran, a Boston A-20 bot, um, bomber, light bomber, flew with 22 Squadron up in New Guinea and crashed up there, was recovered in 1987 and restored by the RAAF. ultimate display. Two aircraft were recovered and one is to go on display up at PNG. A heavily armed attack bomber with able to Assault the enemy with devastating effect. This is a submarine seagull. Um, we saw the Warus, they're also called the Warus. I was here oh, years ago and saw this aircraft in the restoration shop. Back in those days, there was just the wings and the fuselage. 
A lot of work was done by the museum staff here to return it to display condition. And here's what she looked like back then, probably a little further on than I recalled. This actual walrus was being used down in the Southern Ocean near Heard Island, crashed and laid there for years before being recovered and restored to display condition. And it's, they've done, to put it bluntly, an excellent job. Here's the Royal Aircraft Factory BE-2A used by the Australian Flying Corps back in the First World War. Imagine the drag from all those flying wires. And here we have the SE-5, one of the most successful fighters of the First World War. A beautifully sculptured wooden propeller Giant radiator in front and the long exhaust down the side. Here are some of the aircraft on display outside the hangar. Uh, in front of us is a Bristol freighter. Behind that, I think probably an E model Hercules. And down the far distance, the AP3C Orion. And over here in the hangar you can see being worked on there's a tiger moth and possibly a Harvard by the looks of it. And if you can just see through the gloom you can see a meteor buried in there. I'd like to show you a bit more of the base here being it's such an historic place but unfortunately it's still a Air Force base so photography of the base itself is not allowed but just to give you an idea in March 1913, it was named, Point Cook was named as the site for the Central Flying School, part of the Australian Army. Then in February 1914, the first aircraft were delivered, and in March 1914, the first flight was made. From then on, it's operated as the major training establishment for the Air Force, up until about, we're in the, I think, 1980s when most of the training was outsourced. So this has been kept as the museum site because of its historic nature and also because there is still training going on the Air Force cadets. That diamond you can see under the tail of the Orion is one of the new diamonds for the Australian Air Force cadets. To give you another little bit of history, the first service that the um, Central Flying School or the um, AFC Australian Flying Corps saw was in February 1915 in what was then known as Mesopotamia. Here we have two CT4 air trainers lighting up. And fortunately I just missed the pilots doing a walkthrough of their formation aerobatics routine they're going to go out over the bay and do. Here is a BAE 
748 that the RAAF used for training. First I thought it was very dirty and dusty but then I saw in another post that this is the uh, result of the preservative that's applied to the aircraft. Almost looks like desert camouflage. And here we have a Bristol Bloodhound surface to air missile. Bit of a difference to the missiles we employ today. This thing is certainly a giant. And here we are in the strike, no, rather the fighter part of the museum and reconnaissance. This is the GAF Pika. And next to it is the Jindavik we've already seen. In the background is the fuselage of a Catalina. And in the back, the Sabre. And this beautifully restored Hawker Demon. Over in the back there is the Dragon. And then our panic fighter, the little boomerang. And down here is the beautifully restored Avro Cadet. Down there is a Sikorsky Dragonfly somewhat better condition as what we saw down at Nowra, the one they're waiting to preserve. There we have the squirrel and a UH-1H Huey there and of course the bird dog. See if I can get you a little bit better look at the cadet. And in the background behind it, the demon. Here's a montage of the strike and reconnaissance aircraft that was flown by the other way. The reason I'm taking it is some pictures here because there's no surviving Lincoln. There it shows the camera followed by the fan while we were waiting for the F-111. Lincoln's again. Lincoln's dropping bombs in anger in the Malayan, what's called the Malayan emergency. There it shows the lineage back to the Lancaster. We also flew a long range, or rather a long nose version of the Lincoln as a reconnaissance aircraft. There's the Lincoln up the top there. The Canberra followed the Lincoln and became our strike bomber until the F-111 was ordered but then because of the issues with the swing wing as I said before in a previous video we operated the F-4E Phantom. These were essentially straight from US Air Force stocks and uh, even the camouflage wasn't changed. And of course then, once that beautiful beast was finished with, we came over to the F-111. There's some of the weapons. This is the AGM-142. There's retarded bombs, free fall bombs. In addition to the C model that the RWF operated, in the training mode we took 12 additional F-111Gs for training purposes and this one was the only one made up from parts from the boneyard at Davis Montan and you'll see the skull in there it was known as the boneyard wrangler and you'll see it up there also on the tail fin. 
Unfortunately, this is the only way I can show you the long nose version of the Lincoln in this photograph. I'll try and get the lights out of the way. And that tail plane there is from a Lincoln that crashed unfortunately on a Mercy flight into Mount Cerberus out west of Brisbane. Over there is a cocoon Chinook. If you recall I said the Air Force did operate helicopters. So that's probably a C model. Now all the rotary wing flying is done by the Army or the Navy. And in the background there's a the Orion also covered in the preservative and the A model Hercules. The RAAF was the second orderer of the Hercules after the US Air Force and we have operated all the different marks so far. And there's the B model in the background and the tail of that A model. And here we are in the restoration hangar at uh, RAAF Point Cook or RAAF Williams. There you go, the current aircraft where the main focus on is the de Havilland Mosquito, the Wooden Wonder. And now you can see why it was called the Wooden Wonder. Obviously the two halves of the fuselage have been mated by the looks of it. There are some original parts, you can still see the around all there on part of it and some of the old timber underneath where the wing attaches and or goes through, not attached, goes through and up in the nose. Down here, work is underway in There's the undercarriage all ready to go. I'd like to thank Ron Gretton for the discussions we had and the information he provided to me. Over here we are on the, at the door with the yellow cover over the cockpit is the Royal Aircraft Factory RE8 and that's currently a flying aircraft and a lot of work going on there and down below the frame you can see behind this piping I'll see if I can get a bit better photo is the de Havilland DH-60M Gypsy Moth you can see a lot of the work being done there there's the wings over there in front of them the restored mosquito tail plane it's the There we go, even closer to the mosquito. There is normally a Mustang hanging here as well. Uh, it must be out either on engine run or getting work done or maybe headed off to a display somewhere. But try and give you as much of a, a look at everything to do with the mozzie. If you recall I said I'd been here when the walrus was done. I might see if I can get a photo while the walrus was in here, taking up the space to show what it was looked like before it was finished. try and come from as many different angles as I can and see what's going on. The tail wheel is all wrapped up ready to go and it looks like the undercarriage is all there sitting waiting but there's a long way to go and the timber workers can be seen. Not many places you can go in the world and see a mosquito being restored and given the quality of the workmanship that goes on down here it'll be a magnificent example once complete
Oh, there we go. That's the restoration hangar at yeah, Royal Australian Air Force Museum RAAF Williams at Point Cook in nature or in the same ideal restoring historically significant aircraft to what is historically the oldest military airfield in the world. It appears as though the museum's Mustang and Tiger Moth might be doing the flying today. Usually an aircraft of the museum flies during the day. Yesterday or the other day was supposed to be the Sopwith Pup but as you probably noticed the the winds have been very strong and unfortunately it was just too strong for the, the pup to fly. So that's the Mustang that's normally in, stored in the re restoration hangar. There we go, Point Cook is the birthplace of Australian military aviation and the oldest continuously operating military airfield in the world. And if you look down there, you'll see the airstrip next to that, the bay and that lagoon. Originally, there was a seaplane base down there as well. And one of the epic instances in the life of Point Cook was the first long distance flight when some um, sent what was Central Flying School aircraft circumnavigated Australia, which would be about 12,000 miles. Not bad in those days, especially when Australia wasn't all that well developed in some of those areas in the north and northwest. I hope you've enjoyed your visit to the Royal Australian Air Force Museum at RAAF Base Williams, Point Cook. That is the official name of Point Cook, RAAF Williams, named after the first pilot and the first chief of the air staff. Okay, see you next time.